Andre, and this is the Parks on Sukhoi, a very capable 3D plane featuring AS3X and SAFE. The combination of AS3X and SAFE, uh, the SAFE technology has really opened up the uh, what this plane can do, particularly as, a, as an entry level or a rookie 3D pilot. Um, in two out of three modes, in Precision and 3D, you have a trigger set, a failsafe uh, panic button that you can engage if you get into trouble or you lose orientation and the plane will right itself. In Stigility, everything's automatic. Let go of the sticks and she will flip right over and go straight as an arrow. It's quite fascinating and, and, and exhilarating to watch. And when I got the plane, uh, and the reason I'm doing this video today, is to discuss what it took to set up, particularly with a Turner G9X and an orange module. Um, my initial questions when I was putting this plane together and setting up the radio was, how would I know what mode I'm in? And we're going to cover some of that in, in, uh, in further depth, discussing you know the different modes and what to look for when you are setting it up. Um, I describe this plane as a good third plane. A trainer, your intermediate, like say a T-28, and then step into something like this. It's a fairly, uh, you know, it's not a super expensive plane, but it's a it's a it's a fairly expensive step up to the next one. But you're left with uh, you're presented with a plane that um, it flies well. It's got speed. It can slow down to do 3D. It's got some great technology behind it. Uh, 3S2200, and it fits into most cars quite nicely. So we're going to step in with a remote, and we're going to talk about how to set it up, particularly with the 9X and the orange module, and what to look for in the control surfaces, which will give you a clue what mode you're in. So we're working with a manual to determine what the panic mode is and what the flight mode uh, selection switch is on channel 5 and 6. I initially had issues and had them backwards, so on my maiden flight, I was actually stuck in 3D mode, which meant I had to slow right down or risk taking off the control surfaces. So we're going to initialize this thing. I'm going to run through the modes and explain them. So there you go. Watch this. So she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's, she's level. Uh, I've also set up the uh, high rates and low rates according to spec, which is 20% and 80%. So my God, it's all in the manual. But you can definitely see the throw differences in the control surfaces. Um, the only time, uh, and, and you have to arm the plane, so basically run up the prop to get the, uh, the uh, safe mode to actually engage. So we're going to do that. Hold her down, throttle lock, fire up. <laughs> throttle lock is re-engaged. You can see a little bit of the panic mode. Now if I dunk up, uh, I tip the nose up, you can see the elevator starts moving around. I can hit the switch. So there you go. So the panic switch does work in uh, in uh, stability mode, but if you let go of the controls, it will auto right. Next up is 3D, and the throws in 3D are big. And then once you switch down the precision, throws drop down, and that is the big difference between it. So if I hit the panic mode, so there you go. Basically, all the throws are really large in 3D, which is what you want. So there's my low rates, high rates. And then when I go into precision, you'll notice the ailerons and the control surfaces don't move around because you're moving around faster. But I can still engage and have all the deflection and the control surfaces. So what you're looking at right now is the programming for the three uh, position switch. So 85 got me 85% uh, got me my ID zero, which is the uh, stability mode. And then I was half on at 100% for ID one, which was my 3D, and then zero full, which was ID two, uh, and that's my precision mode. And you can see then the trigger switch is a uh, full setting at 71%. And that is what I had to come back with or, or step through incrementally and test it. And it, it seemed like if the values were too high, obviously they would step on top of each other and the trigger switch wouldn't work. And that's just a trial and error. It took about two hours, to be honest, to make it all do what I wanted to do. And uh, But I can switch through the modes. So if anybody else runs this combination, you'll have to let me know. Or if you get the orange radio from uh, Hobby King, 
with a three-way switch. I know they did a two-way switch and you were limited to um, two different modes only instead of three modes. So you'll have to let me know if you f uh, find similar results or do something different. But I had to jump between the full and the half and everything just trying to make the throws work because I could get like two out of three modes and not all three modes. But eventually I figured it out and everything's been quite successful. So there you go. That's my setup. If anybody's running a similar setup with an INX and the orange module, let me know what your switches are doing. Um, I would have expected the you know, 0, 50, 100 to do the trick, but obviously not. It does work. This is an awesome plane. If you're looking for that next step, that next plane in your hangar, oh, I, I recommend it. The safe technology and the wide envelope of this airplane and, and the security that you get with it. Um, it won't save you if you're low to the deck and everything, but it's a tough, durable plane. If you listen to the podcast from the uh, Flight Test After Hour guys, Chris Rod Caglione and all his buddies, they put it through his paces, and uh, I concurred with everything they said. They influenced my purchase greatly, and yeah, I, I can't recommend this plane enough. And on the radio, yeah, a Spectrum would have been awesome, but it's so expensive. And even the orange radio with the new three channels, the shipping alone is, is too much. So a $30 module that fits into my handy-dandy Turnigy 9X, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to doing some more with you. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff, FPV and multi-copters multi and all that fun stuff. So... Um, I'm going to try and fly this thing a little bit more before the winter. Uh, I don't know if I want to fly it during the snow. We'll have to see how the landing scenarios go because I don't want to muck it up. It's a work of art. It's such a beautiful plane. But next spring, I'll be pushing myself to get better at my air, my uh, you know precision aerobatics and my 3D and all that good stuff and hovering and having so much fun. So hope you enjoy the video. Have a great day. Thanks.